anything for your show. It doesn't uh, it doesn't hurt you. It's not going to mess with you. So out you go. And once again, you can see how I'm able to get the whole patch and fixture schedule on this uh, this screen here, this doodly do. If I try to do this another way, let's say I move this over to screen two, and then I go to the patch and fixture schedule. Ew. Ew, look at all the scrolling you have to do to make this work on fix on screen two. First thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna move this back to screen five where it's nice and big, where I can see everything. Because that's amazing. I'm gonna go ahead and close screen five. Because close. Get back to where you were. If you look on your main screen one, where your uh, where your command section is here, hit this yellow dot or the yellow ball. The yellow ball is super important. Learn to love the yellow ball. The yellow ball is where a lot of really cool information is that's for some reason not in setup. I'm not sure why. It should be. But here you can clear a screen. You can clear all screens. You can pull up the debug window which is, if you haven't seen the debug window, it's a separate pop-up window that shows the actual runtime underneath of the Linux kernel, which is gnarly. Cascade the windows, it'll just kind of fan everything out. Uh, you've got options, you got a, you can quit, you've got reset time, you reset size of windows. You can do all kinds of crazy things. Uh, the yellow ball is your friend. Learn to love the yellow ball. In options, Oop, I double click because I'm being silly. Ah, Grand MA2 on PC options. This is this is an amazing place. Window frames on and off. If you noticed, I don't have the little thing like in any. Uh, I pull File Explorer over here real quick so you don't see stuff. But you can see how there's this bar here on top with the the minus, the expand, and the X. You know, it's gone, and it's in this little bitty window here. That's because window frames is off. Pay attention to that and experiment with that. It's gonna it's gonna force a reset before you see any changes in that. Oh yes, I'm so sorry, Cedric. You are correct. Because again, silly things. Boom, really big. So, yellow ball options. Window frames is what's going to have. I know I've got it a little bit cut off here, so I will just kind of move things over this way for a minute. Just for a minute. So up here, this little thing is going to be feel like the windows menu except it's not it's uh it's its own thing inside ma that is because window frames is off if you turn window frames on you'll see at the top of your uh screen here or you would another little strip of pixels to have where it says you know grand ma2 on pc version 3.9 point whatever and yada 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 and then the minimize, maximize X. I turn those off so I can get a little bit more screen real estate because I put all four screens of MA or four screens worth of MA2 on one 24 inch screen in front of me. I'm able to read really small text. I don't have to worry about reading glasses and stuff like that. So I can make it really small and survive and get away with what I'm doing. Highly recommend you play around with that and see if you can get that little extra bit of real estate. And it also takes away the ability to accidentally move stuff the only way you can move a window around is if you click in this little box up here. So just keep that in mind. You know, it, could, it maybe it can help you, maybe it won't. Encoder style rotation or, or MA. Rotation is gonna make you think it's an actual wheel. So you have to click and then scroll, 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 scroll. If you set it to MA and you click in the middle, if you lean your mouse to the left, it'll keep going to the left. If you go up, it'll just kind of nudge its way up and down. I prefer this. I don't even use it really because I'm using one of these crazy Kensington trackball mice here um, because I used to work in audio and I felt like every studio had to have a Kensington trackball pro because you do. I have that and it's got its own little scroll wheel and I just use it. You can mouse over any one of these things, any one of these uh, four wheels here when you're working. And if you scroll with that wheel, it behaves like a scroll wheel. We were talking about it earlier, but now we're actually gonna see how. When you go to yellow ball and view, resolution on external one. Here's where you can make all these big changes. You can set it to all these different screen options. There's a ton of them and it's gonna depend on what your hardware is that's plugged in. I set it as high as is reasonable and then as wide as is practical. So if I set it to 2048 by 1536, it ends up being bigger than my screen. And then when I shrink it down to fit it into my screen, 
I end up losing a lot of real estate. At 2048 by 1152, it works for me. It looks correct. Resolution on external two, same deal. You can set it as big or high as you want. There you go. You also need to know that if you had views, custom views set up for those external displays, uh, those views do not track along with the changes in size. So you can make things look really funky and weird and bad if you go the wrong way through this. So just know that it can happen, pay attention to it, and you'll be fine. Miscellaneous, priority, high normal. I don't mess with that. I don't screw with priorities except for non-dims on the house lighting in the building if I have it, and my transition queue. Um, I have one other queue uh, that is in that is in higher priority than anything else. I keep it in super priority, and that is, um, you can call it an SOS, an emergency queue, a code black queue, or a Route 91 queue. Um, it sucks that we have to have these nowadays, but nowadays we do. Um, I build a queue. I build one queue in my show in every show file I have. I haven't done it on this one yet, so I'll show you guys how it. I will do that with you. Um, that takes every light in the rig, points it out the audience, turns them on at full blast. Um, in case some idiot does something really stupid or something like Route 91 happens again, and now we all have to think about it because uh, active shooters or concerts are a thing. And if you've ever been on a tour of any size, you know you've had those kind of meetings where you have to talk about what to do if there's an active shooter. Uh, what to do if there's an emergency situation, how to get your guys out, how to get your guys off the stage quickly. Once that situation happens, you're here for the safety of all. Everybody's working together to get stuff solved. One of the things you can do is make it, make the avenues visible for people to get in and out. And I know that can work both ways and it can be a little counterintuitive, but you wanna have as much light for people to see to get the hell out of a room if they have to, um, regardless of the situation. What it also does is blinds everybody from seeing the stage so you can get your band off stage. You can get you and your guys the hell out of there. If you can do that with one button, um, that offs everything, takes over and just slam, lights on. It's important nowadays. Um, and what I use for it, and I I may have to go find some stuff so I can install this, I'll do, I might do this on another day, is uh, Geofflow's flash button executor page. That thing, that flash button executor page, if you don't know about it, um, I can't demonstrate because I don't have it here, but it creates a flash button on your console. So you can keep it in your X, you can keep it with your X keys or your X buttons. You can keep it anywhere. If you hold down a button, it will flash pop up a different page. Wow, that's crucial. That was, it's such a cool idea. It's so gnarly. It, it was just stinking good and I use that like crazy. I have one flash page uh, to pull up any tests or masters or test patterns or whatever, so that they hide away from me when I don't need them. But when I hold down a button and I want them, there they are. When you load these flash buttons, you can also do another one. So you can do like a page, a flash page within a flash page within a flash page. You can get really inception-y about it. But if I, for my shows, the way I use it, hold one, I've got my test patterns and all my pre-show stuff. Uh, you know, on the times when I used to have a queue stack for all the presets I want to update, that's how I did it. Hold down the second one, and that's where the real deep utility stuff comes in. Um, the panic, I've lost all time code, I've lost all control, try and mash a look or a queue for the console dies. So there are some lights on stage while I'm rebooting. That's, I have that in there, but I also have my, you know, my code black, and it's, you know, it's, it's super critical to do stuff like that. Um, Cause you have to think about it because all of a sudden if a situation and something weird goes down, you're not just the LD for the tour. You're the guy who has control of the lighting in the room. You know, especially if it's, especially if you have control of the house, house, you know, uh, building lighting. But even if not, you've got 2000 people plus or minus in a room, you're the only guy with lighting. So, you have to do your part to help people as much as you can. So have that in there. Uh, MIDI, MIDI is cool. MIDI from on PC command wing. Yes, that's so you can accept MIDI into the back of a command wing if you have one. Uh, MIDI in devices, MA2, I have MA2 MIDI loop. 
Um, that's because I use Reaper and I use the uh, use that tried and true method of Reaper sending MIDI timecode through MIDI loop, which is free software into MA so that I can have timecode for my shows. Um, if you don't know how to